personally, I think it's way implausible and totally over the top. But who knows? Maybe someone would want to make this movie. Anyway, the plot starts in the late 1970s and the early 1980s where members of the Chinese Communist Party in the post maoist era are looking over the history of the country since the Re People's Revolution and what happened in the country under Mao and then the Chinese Cultural Revolution and then the Gang of Four takeover and what they learned from this and isolationism and President Nixon and the United States in the post-Vietnam War era that they realized that the old way of doing things was probably not going to serve them well in the future. They were heading for more kind of Maoist little red book, cultural revolution type things. At the same time too, there was also a strong sense of resentment among people in China regarding the relationship with the colonial powers, this being things like the Opium Wars and so on, the fall of the Han Empire. Coupled with all these things, in this imaginary plot, the Chinese begin infiltrating Western institutions in the early 80s with the eventual intention of invading and taking over the Western world as the supreme world power in a military and every other way. Now, so this begins with, they arrive in Germany in the 1980s and they meet these people who are part of a new group called the Greens. And the Greens are an environmental movement that started in Germany and among their platform is the de of Germany and Europe and things like the legalization of paedophilia and so on. The Chinese communists infiltrate these groups and give them large sums of money. But then when they see that the agenda is not going their way, they have the two leaders of the German Green Party murdered and they make it look like a murder-suicide. And then they deliberately recruit over members of radical faction groups like the Red Army Faction, Bader Meinhof, and they dovetail them into the German Green moving, Movement and create a demilitant Marxist communist organization which operates under the umbrella and smokescreen of being an environmental new economy type political system for the future. They disseminate this idea into several countries. They start off by beginning with economic, ecological and environmental things, stopping, stopping factories from polluting rivers and so on. And then they radically take them over and something else. They believe that the number of the, the, the Chinese co a, a, a communist agents infused within all the Western green movements, but particularly in Europe, the belief that we're living in a post-industrial age. And manufacturing is something that's dirty and degrading. And the future is in things like IT and the information technology. So as a result, Europe, North America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, they all begin to slowly through a cultural shift that disseminates from the establishment down into deindustrialization, therefore losing their capacity for self-autonomy. But at the same time too, they still need these products. And the Chinese communists say, well, we'll build them for you at bargain discount rates. We'll build you anything you want, anything you want. We'll make it for you in China in our factories and it will cause your profits will be sensational. So as a result, it isn't so bad for all these companies that were heavily involved in the industry in the United States and Europe and Canada and elsewhere. What they do is they move their factories to China 
and the CEOs or their families who own these companies continue to rake in large amounts of money, more than they ever dreamed of, while they don't have to pay local workers and dealing with unions and so on and paying rent and rent, renting infrastructure and all other charges in their own country. They just basically issue a catalogue. It's made in China and it's, it's sold into Europe and into North America. So overnight, the Chinese Communists have taken Europe and America and deindustrialized it because, well, industry is dirty. Then they say, you have to make clean energy. And then they point at the, uh, uh, the power stations and they tell activists over there who are working through the Green Movement that they must point at heavy coal gas power stations and tell them that they must be shut down because they're bad for the environment. And they're polluting and replace them with sustainable energy, which they do. And after a while, the Western powers, the Western nations don't have any electrical power grid capacity because they shut down all their dirty oil and coal stations and they put in windmills and things that don't produce enough capacity. So they've now lost their industrial capacity that would they could to, to produce basically everything and they've also lost their electrical power supply grid capacity and it's all to protect the environment. Meanwhile, in mainland China, they build a power station every single week out of towards coal or oil. And they build massive high-speed rail systems because these high-speed rail systems require massive amounts of power. And they tell the same thing to Europeans. And the green parties in Europe say, well, we will have all these, these fantastic, you know, electric underground metros and light rail systems and all this stuff. In the end, all they get is a few cycle lanes. In fact, one of the case studies, the Chinese operatives in Ireland, running the Green Party in Ireland, get them to make this big plan of having underground rail systems all over Dublin to relieve congestion. But in the end, all they get are cycle lanes and a few extra buses. And the, and the city's as gridlocked as ever. And that was done all over Europe through the local Chinese Communist Green Party diplomatic attaché known as the local Green Party. But by this time it's spread further than just the Green Party. For example, a cultural change now has to take place. Western men have to be feminized. In order to do this, you need universities, scientists and so on to say that there's no such thing as genders, that men can have babies and periods. At the same time, back in China, you're banning boy bands and you're increasing, the Chinese communists are increasing activities, sports, training and military training. You get Polish professors and you get, you flood, you, you flood Western universities with thousands upon thousands of attractive young Chinese female students. These Chinese female students played a little kind of innocent flower lotus flower and have affairs with these college professors in western universities then one day a cd or a dvd or a usb card a flash drive arrives in his office and there was him a video of him having sex with the young chinese girl student exchange student but that's not what really is. They've used high-end AI CGI to remove the Chinese young girl he was having sex with and replace it with an underage boy. See, it's not that much of a leap to put a Western underage boy and to put it in their CGI in where the attractive, small, slight, petite Asian woman was exchange to it. And then they say to him, you will do whatever we want you to do and say. And the next thing you know, college professors are saying, there's no such thing as gender. Men can have babies and periods. There is no such thing as male or female. 
zitty and her, zur, and all this mad gaslighting. And they're all doing it in tandem. So, oh, while this is all going, the Chinese Communist Party are tooling up and building an enormous army. And they're doing it all without firing a shot. They are demolishing the Western ability to, to power itself, feed itself, manufacture for itself. This is called siege warfare. And now they begin the propaganda mind warfare. They go into the military and they do the same to generals. They blackmail and compromise them. And the next thing you know, you have Western armies filled with prancing guys wearing high heels. And the Chinese soldiers get tougher and tougher and tougher. Then something happens. A virus gets leaked from a laboratory.